welcome back to using Creo. Let's get on with this Virgin Folio clock. We've got a few more episodes till we got something that we can use. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the stuff that we built already. It's only three parts, but we're going to modify it a little bit. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to modify some of these things. So first thing that we need to do is come in here and we take a look at what I estimated uh, the radius would be um, for the, or the circumference for all these pins. And you can see that it's a little overdone for, for what I need. And I, I kind of prefer this gear the way it is. So what I need to do is move these guys in. Now the way we can do that is, is that we need to do a radial move. Now this can be a little bit confusing sometimes when you come in and start using some of the uh, functionality here because you're not sure exactly what to select and when. So let's say that I want to move um, the, this face, right? Well, the thing is, is that if I take that face and let's just make an assumption here. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm just going to get out of this real quick and we're going to start again. Now I'll show you the mistake that I made right off the get-go. So you go for radial move. I want to do it around that circumference. I held down the shift key and I started selecting the faces that I wanted to move. And I selected all of these. And I hit OK. And then I hit OK again. Let's just see if I can make this a little more clear. I apologize for the little bit of a delay here on working this out. But okay, so we'll do the faces. Hold down shift. Let's select all of them again. Let's see if we can make this work. So we've got all that set up. We selected the faces. We'll hit done. And at this point, you see the arrow will allow me to move stuff. Problem is, is that it's moving all these, all these, uh, faces that I've chosen all together in one spot. So if I hit OK, it can't solve that because it was moving the wrong way and nothing was working properly. So how you do this or how you get around this, the way the functionality of this is supposed to be is, let's choose that axis. Then I'm not going to hold down shift, but I'm going to choose a face such as that face right there for that pin. Then I'm going to come in, I'm going to hit new group and choose another face. And then I'm going to hit new group and choose another face. So you need to group the things that you want to uh, fly out around the radius. So once we've done all these, we've got that. Now I'm going to hit done. And you'll notice when I zoom in here now with a better orientation, as I move everything, everything is moving in and out um, around that one axis. So I can start bringing it in. Now not too sure if that'll be very good. Uh, that doesn't look too bad, but we're going to maybe bring this in about three. There we go. So three looks good to me, and we're going to hit OK. And you'll notice that radial move, I managed to get all these pins to the center um, quite easily, very efficiently. The big thing is to make sure that when you come in and you use the radial move, and you choose your axis, when you choose faces, you got to basically choose a face like that one I want to move. Then you have to go for another group. If I keep choosing, let's just say I go for a new group. I know I'm going over this again and again, but it's very important that you understand what's going on. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to choose the rest of these pins. And we're going to say OK. When we hit done, now what happens is, is that one pin that I chose separately moves differently than the rest of this. So let's just accept this and see what happens. So you can see all those pins that I chose in a group moved as one unit. And that guy moved his one unit. So we're just going to X out of that. Again, to make sure we got this center axis. You choose the faces. You choose one face. Then you choose a new group. Then you choose the next face that you want to move out. And you keep going that way. And that way you can get things to work properly. So there's my first modification trick. Next one is I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to just start grabbing these faces here. Because these pins are pretty tiny. They're just not going to work properly. So I'm going to choose all of those. Just going to choose, not move 3D, I want to come in here. You want to do offset in this case. And these pins were, I believe, 2 millimeters in diameter, but you can see that I can modify these. So let's just take a look. I'm going to, I guess, by golly, this here. One will be a little too much, so let's go to 0.5. I think that looks pretty good. So now I've beefed up those pins and I've moved them inwards, and they're still um, 
concentric or in the within the circle of this this uh this crown gear so the next thing that we're going to need to do is i want to make sure that things are going to work out properly as far as the meshing of the gears so i can choose on this face here and one thing you'll notice is if you come up to here there's this button that says view by that one face and once you do that you can also hit this which will zoom everything into view or you can choose this button here and what it will do is allow you to zoom into one very specific spot like that so you can start coming in and taking a look at things the way you really want to without necessarily having to deal with the scroll wheel which sometimes doesn't seem to be doing what you really want it to you know what i'm going to want to be able to see is basically that now what i'm going to do here is is that i'm going to just basically rotate this wheel or this gear so I can take a look at how the pins start meshing and then I'm just going to move them around a little bit and make sure that I got everything correct. So what we need to do is we need to position this part. Now what we're going to do is the default which is dynamic position. You can take a look at some of these but these aren't exactly what I want. So I'm just going to hit position. I'm going to choose this guy. Now remember I want to rotate him. So I'm going to hit this for the rotational axis and I'm going to choose the axis of that. And now you can see I can modify this without moving it around too much. I can get in here and and uh, take a quick look at how this is going to mesh up. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to say that that is okay. And you can say it's okay by hitting the middle mouse button. That's one thing to really keep in mind. Now we can just take a quick look here and we can see that as this this guy is rotating that uh, there might be a slight chance it's going to bump into the uh, tips of this gear but we can just rotate or basically move these parts using the position command just to take a quick look at things um, it's usually quite quick just to kind of get an eye on things so that would be sitting right about there we'll hit ok so I can see that this will be clearing everything will clear properly as this green gear rotates up through the axis there you can see that this pin will clear and this one will be released before we actually get to the point where it has to go. Um, you basically can come in here and just rotate the gears to make sure everything is right. So what we've done here is basically move these pins, um, increase their diameter, and then we made sure just a real quick cursory check to see if we're going to have the proper clearance that we want. But I want to modify a couple of the pieces here still. Now one of the things that I want to do here is, is that this pendulum actually needs to be up above uh, these gears. Um, it's going to be rotating and swinging like this around this uh, this dowel here. So you can see immediately that I have all this stuff in the wrong spot. But what I can do is I can do a quick box select and get everything that I want. But I still want to position it. And that original position here, I'm just going to go back to where I was. If you can box select everything, the initial position doesn't necessarily come up with uh, this guy being at the right spot you want because if I try to move him he's going to be going up at an angle and that's not what I wanted to have happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out of that and again we're going to use our position and we're going to come in here and we're just going to select that part and we're going to move him. And you can see that this doesn't necessarily do what I want because it's moving everything and that's not what I wanted to do. The position is not what you should be doing in this case and that was an error that I generally make is sometimes you look at stuff and it looks like it should be what you're wanting you know I was thinking I just got to position this top piece it isn't quite right you got to really look at what you need to do in this case I want to pull and it says pull a profile but you'll notice that you can also pull faces so you come in here and I grab just the top faces like that and I've got an arrow and at this point you'll notice that I can start pulling this guy up Let's make this 70 and I'll hit OK. Uh, we can close out of this guy and close out of him again. And now you can see that I've managed to extend that geometry really quickly with a pull. And I was pulling a bunch of faces all together all at once. So I've got that pendulum up as high as I need to. So when I start building the frame for this guy, I'm going to be able to put the frame in and make sure that I've got the pendulum at the right height. So and the, the next thing that I wanted is, is that you'll notice with this gear here, I had this little cutout in here for the spokes. And I want to do the same for this guy because this gear, it just doesn't look very stylized at all. So what we're going to do is very quickly come in here and it's not the crown gear. Let's hide the stuff that we don't need to see. And we've got this guy. But you also notice that the outline on this guy is black. So it means that it's not currently the active part. So come in here, right click, 
and we are going to set it as active. And suddenly you'll see the outline of this part is green, meaning it's the one that we're working on. At this point, we can come in here and start sketching. And I'm just going to hold down shift, grab the center of that circle, then I'm going to come out and I'm going to hold shift just to get to that point. And very quickly, I've established that circle that I need. And I want to take him, and instead of pulling him out, I want to use him to cut in. And you'll notice that it will make a boss if you're coming that direction. It'll make solid. But if you start going into the part, that it starts cutting. So let's just go in. Yeah, three looks pretty good. And we'll say that that's okay. So we've made that initial cut, and that's great. But what if I want to make that cut on the other side? Do I have to come over and redraw everything, um, recreate another work plane and everything? And the answer is, is no. Um, what you can start doing in this case is move the plane around. Now, how we can move the plane around is, is that we just come in here and we select it, and you have the uh, this toolbar that comes up, and we want to position the work plane, and it brings up a new icon that we can use to move the work plane. But you'll notice the sketch goes with it. Now, the problem is, is I don't want to pull it all the way out here. I actually want it to snap to this one face. But if I hold down Shift, you'll notice that it starts snapping to geometry like that pin. And it goes 10, which is the thickness of this gear. If you happen to know it, you could have pushed that in there or put that data in there, the numeral digits into that field and being able to do that. And we can come in here and we can do that secondary cut that we wanted to. And I did that one at three, so we'll say OK. And we've made those two cuts that we need and we can very quickly get rid of that. And we have the spokes done properly on here and you can start stylizing them a little bit by adding a chamfer and... Once you choose a size and everything, you can come in and just start selecting the geometry that you want to apply that chamfer to. So let's just start making it look like the other clock gear. And we'll find out if it will let us chamfer. Yeah, we got enough room to do that in here. Which is great. So now we get everything so it looks proper. Just like that. Now, one of the things, too, that you can do is, if you were watching, um, I, mani I managed to basically do that one chamfer, but once I had it all selected, once I started selecting the edges, it would just do the rest for me. So let's come in here, and I, I'm not a big fan of these being all that pointy. So let's make a radius of 1 on that guy. And at that point, you'll notice, well, let's see if we make this happen properly. Come down to radius of 1. Now, as I select the edges, it's just going to start applying that radius to all these guys. So it can be a little arduous coming in and selecting all these points because I did make uh, 60 teeth, but it's worth it in the end. And we'll come through and round off all those gears so that when you make something like this, it's a little more manufacturable and works a little better. Now, one thing that you'll notice is, is a little earlier I had done this, and let's just go to the radius of 1 and we will click on it as soon as we get there i had clicked on an edge like this uh, while i was doing all the the radiuses and then i hit enter and the problem is is that i got this one radius that i didn't want now what can you do with that well this is one thing that's pretty easy is if you click on it you can come in here and you can do a blend remove it'll ask you to do that again just hit the middle mouse button and it gets rid of that so that's one way that, um, you know, you get caught up in, in doing stuff and you add some of that, uh, a fillet somewhere where you didn't want it. It's actually very easy to remove. You just merely have to click on it like this and tell the computer to get rid of it, hit the middle mouse button, and it will take and take all the data and run it back to where it was, where it was a nice point, and everything should be good. So hopefully that's helped you out. Uh, we will continue on next week. Hopefully we can get into the frame. And then once we get the frame, we got the axles. And we can maybe start building one of these things. Hopefully I can get one of these actually built and show you how you can very quickly, through Creole Elements, Direct Modeling Express, get in, model something up in a rough way, and have a working model in, in a matter of hours. Really.